Hello everyone, you have entered the battle phase. It is I, the Midnight Bard, your favorite bard, and I've been abducted by aliens. Joining me as always is the boys. Starting from the top, we got Helix, who once met Bigfoot in person. I thought I was Bigfoot. <laughs> and Sacro, who... Oh, gosh, I didn't even think of one. And <laughs> damn it! Wow, I feel very <laughs> loved Batman. here. Hold on. And Sacro, who loves to go swimming with the Loch Ness monster. Fun fact: I've been to Loch Ness. It was nice. Uh, there's no railing, so um, yeah, drive safely there. <laughs> Brother Gamma was eaten by an antelope this week, so until he respawns, he's gonna be absent. However, I did manage to channel him via spiritual means, so he you might hear him speak up here and there. Hello, this is Gamma. I have been eaten by an antelope, but I wanted to give my opinion on a few things. I am channeling Barr with this information for him to add it to the episode. I hope it gets through. Question, Bard. Yes. What kind of aliens abducted you? The, not the kind that we want to talk about. I am I'm carrying a lot of... Like, you know, we're, I am carrying a lot of trauma and... uh the Asari? Yeah, you know, anyway. Yeah, the Asari, got it. Easy. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, in case you guys haven't figured it out, today we're talking about an upcoming anime adaptation for a manga that I've been really excited for for a long, long time. I, I, I have often said that this was going to get an anime adaptation one day and the world wouldn't know what hit it. We are talking about Don Da Don by Yoki Nobu Tatsu. Is it Don Da Don or Don Da Don? I don't. Bo 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 Bo. It's a it's a Bo 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 situation. There is a million and one different ways to say it, <laughs> but I'm calling it the Da Don. Right. Yeah. So some housekeeping matters before we get into the discussion today. We will be discussing uh, volume that roughly the first two uh, story arcs of volumes one and all the way midway through volume three. 18 chapters, so if you're looking not to get spoiled, be aware. Um, other than that, visit us on Twitter slash X at uh, the Battleface Podcast. What I, what even is our Twitter? I don't even remember. I'm pretty sure. You made it? I made but it. I will and, look for it and while I, you're uh, <laughs> doing your thing. I'm never on it, so I don't even know what it is. Yeah, Helix doesn't know. Okay. Visit us on Twitter on our official Twitter account, the Bat. <laughs> Damn it. Visit us on Twitter <laughs> on our official Twitter account at the Battle Phase. Uh, make suggestions for what we should read next, uh, for what anime we should watch, or for, you know, any other suggestions that you might have. Um, tell us which one of us is the most handsome and why it's barred. Uh, <laughs> that's based. Uh, <laughs> that's based. Uh, <laughs> based. If we're going off voices, um, <laughs> you usually can't tell how attractive someone is by voice. Cause I I've been spoiled many times by hearing an attractive voice and then looking at the person I'm like oh oh <laughs> all right so, so uh that's that's it for housekeeping matters unless you guys had anything else to add to that a anything going on with you guys that you want to be aware of uh you could visit us on our you can visit us on our YouTube channel as well uh gamers playing games TV it's a game it's a YouTube channel where we do a lot of gameplays we recently lost a nuzlocke at gym 2 in brilliant diamond so it's still you know. fresh and I, it's still fresh. Still man. fresh. It happened literally yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. I entirely blame y'all. Uh, blame y'all. You can blame that Turtwig who refused to miss. I was like, dude, this guy. <laughs> I'm like, y'all ran into that, and you were so careful for the first gym, and then you're like, yeah, let's go do the second gym I, I, right after. It's like you're right. I, I was very idea. careful for the first gym, and then right after. I mean, like, cause the thing is, I got overly confident. I did, and this is what I didn't want to do with the first gym. But I guess, like, after the first gym, I was like, nah, yeah, I can do this. But the same thing happened to me in this run that happened to me on the previous run that I did uh, with Shining Pearl, because I did a, a Nuzlocke with Shining Pearl, uh, where mm -hmm. I started with Chimchar, and the first gym was hard, but I had a Machop that that uh, kind of like basically soloed it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But then whenever we got to the second gym, my Chimchar was a Monferno, and he was able to carry me through that one, because... Like, even though Roserade does a lot of poisoning, it was like... It, well, yeah, you had a fire type. Yeah, I had a fire type, so it, it was fine. In this, I mean, we, we would have won if the bird had just 
attack instead yeah, of double team uh, to be on our staravia like yeah no because i was i was hoping that double team would make it hard especially because we got three of them off and i was like okay look we should be evasively okay now but like that like i said that turtrek just did not stop missing it was insane uh so it, it was it was just like a really awkward position to be and then i i misclicked endeavor and i was like oh i didn't mean to do that uh, so it, it, there was and a number had one of, potion for some reason. There was a number of things that went wrong there, uh, and uh, yeah, that, but you were greedy. Yeah, we we we're got good. we got greedy. We'll, we'll come back some other day in a different region, in a different, different Pokemon form. game, and different uh, powers, different powers, different party, different team. It'll be great. And uh, if I may, just one additional thing. Uh, we were leaning very heavy into water types. Uh, That's true. You know, because we had... We had all water types. We had... And, and ground. We had psych, two psychic, two ground, two water. You're very right. Because if we had gone the way that we were, because we had the two rock types, we had two Geodudes, uh, we had like... Uh, and, you know, one of them died in the Eterna Forest before we even got there. Uh, we had mm -hmm. the... Uh, and you know what? I'm, I'm spoiling it. You guys should go watch it. it it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can see us have an absolute meltdown at the end as everything starts falling apart. It was wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about wonderful. That was kind of... That was traumatic. Uh, it's exactly what Sacro wanted. Sacro was complaining the entire time that we were being too careful because mm -hmm. he says he wanted content yeah. and he got all the content, content at the end. It's it was, a little short, but it's a lot of content. <laughs> I don't know about short. That was three hours, man. It was three hours three of hours, grinding. Three hours plus and the session death. zero. And yeah, <laughs> it was wonderful. Uh, but yeah, so today we read uh, Dan 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 by Yokinobu Tatsu. The, the theatrical release for the first uh, couple of episodes is going to be coming up here in a couple of weeks. Uh, I have my tickets. I wanted to go watch this. And this is a manga that I read on recommendation from Gamma. Because... Uh, there was once upon a time when, uh, and this happens periodically every couple of months, where somebody says, oh no, Shonen Jump is losing titles, so, you know, because titles are coming to an end, what is the next big three? You know, because, like, that's the that's the model that we've been working on this entire time, right? You know, we had Bleach, what is it, like, Bleach, Naruto, Bleach, and, Naruto, and, Naruto and, one and One Piece. Piece. And One Piece. Yeah, but One forever. Piece is still going. Technically, One Piece is still part of the big three. Yeah, the, but the... The big three operating at 100% is like Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece. The big three operating at 99.5% power is One Piece by itself. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's never mm, stopped. It's still going. I'd say Naruto still has a bigger cultural impact. That's fine. I um, Have you seen how popular One Piece is in Latin America? It is insanity. One Piece uh, so is Naruto. Popular. What do you mean? Yeah. Everybody's name was something Uchiha. In the Latin American community for years, yeah. decades, even the people Naruto running could not make it into Area Fifty One. I'm just saying, <laughs> Naruto running is very popular too. Oh, that was great. That was one of the funniest things. <laughs> I wish they'd done it. I but, was in the military at the time, so I was reading about that every day. And they're like, "So what's going to happen?" I'm like, "I don't know, man." What was the general consensus of all, all of your buddies whenever y'all were reading that? That we were uh, people were stupid. Well. <laughs> I can so imagine Sacro like in the Middle East reading about this every day, like Lord, please let this happen because it would be so funny. <laughs> I was, uh, I was actually not in the Middle East, luckily at that time. Because um, what was that? That was twenty twenty, maybe twenty twenty ish thereabouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was uh, so okay. So that would have been yeah. I was in Oklahoma at the time, which makes zero sense for the Navy, but you know that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, we were reading a every landlocked, day, a landlocked no, no, state. <laughs> I no, had to write a intel brief for a, an admiral about the possibility of what. <laughs> so I had to explain to him what a Naruto run was. Literally, oh, no God. joke. Can you imagine the army like taking a moment to explain <laughs> what a Naruto so, running is? <laughs> I had they to explain it. Prepared. And I'm like, okay, so the thing is, you got to aim for the legs. So. <laughs> Because the arms are too fast. If they get them into fully locked back position, like, you know, like a fighter plane, right? Yeah. With that jet, to the f they're gone. They're done. So you got to get the legs early and then we're fine. Jeez. <laughs> but there was like some guy talking about carpet bombing and I'm like, this is not okay. We're, we're done with this conversation. <laughs> wow. Okay. So th that being said, you know, every few months, uh, somebody on the internet says, Shonen Jump, it's losing its big three. So what will the next big three be? And there's always like all this talk about like which titles technically 
would would fall upon that. Like right now, they're talking about that again because like Jujutsu Kaisen's coming to an end. Uh, My Hero Academia it just ended, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, and One Piece is supposedly ending again. <laughs> you know, so it's always in. It's, it's never going to end, man. It's, it's going to like be ending. just there because everyone's going to keep reading it. Yeah. So uh, there's no choice but to keep it going. Right. Uh, you know, two time skips later. Uh, but uh, so because because this is happening, you know, like people are asking again, you know, like, hey, what what are Shonen Jump's next big three? And right now people are talking a lot about Chainsaw Man and Kagurabachi and uh, Sakamoto Days and, you know, just a bunch of stuff. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, at the time, whenever, uh, I read the article a couple of years ago, they said, well, obviously the next big three are going to be Don to Don spy family and, uh, and Kaiju number eight. Um, so what me and Gamma did is, uh, you know, uh, with, with Derringer, uh, we, we read, well, no, Derringer didn't read any of them, but me and Gamma read through all three titles until we were caught up with all of them at the time, which was roughly like around 90 chapters for each. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, we tried to explain them to Dare and see which one he liked because Dare is not an anime fan. So, and, and so, you know, it, it was kind of like a lot of like us just gushing over these titles. Uh, and uh, this is me revisiting Don to Don and sharing it with you guys. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, we, like I said, we read the first two story arcs. Uh, the very, the very basic, story plot is you got two high schoolers who meet by chance and then they find out that the the other is a firm believer in something that they themselves do not believe in. Momo is a believer in spirits and uh, Ken Takakura, a.k.a. Okarun, is a believer in UFOs. Uh, and because of that, uh, they, they kind of get in each other's face over how stupid it is that they believe the opposite. And uh, they dare each other to go to places where these phenomenon are known to happen uh, as a test of bravery. Momo, you have to go where aliens are said to abduct people. And Okarun, you have to go into a haunted tunnel and see if you encounter the ghost that that lives therein. Uh, Funnily enough, both of them were right. And both of these things exist. Ghosts and aliens. How about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> One thing leads to another and they get kind of caught up in uh, all kinds of supernatural shenanigans. Uh, I've described this title as uh, as conspiracy theory iceberg uh, or, you know, like a paranormal phenomena iceberg video, the manga. <laughs> so Maybe that's why y'all like it a bit more than I do, because it it feels more like a paranormal investigative style. Yeah, it's not I really mean, they're not, they haven't investigated like, anything yet, but, but maybe like they do par- later. It's more paranormal. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of yokai based shows in manga and anime, so right. mm. yokai angle is always going to be a thing. And, and this is very heavy on the yokai, so it's heavy on the yokai on like the uh, what do you use, like the urban legends, the. Uh, UFO, UAP phenomenon, you know, like par- lizard people shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, they made like two references to American or Western cryptids. I think it's Bigfoot and the something monster. The Flatwoods monster, yes. The it, Flatwoods monster, which I've read the all Flatwood about. The Flatwoods monster when you played Fallout, dude. That's one of them. <laughs> that's one of the cryptids that shows up in Fallout. <laughs> which Fallout? I don't remember that. Let's Google search it right now. Which? Uh, I mean, you could be right. I just don't know which. Fallout, that's in. Which one is it? Flatbush? Flatwoods. Flatwoods monster. Yes. Fallout 76. Okay, that's why. I never played 76. <laughs> which, yep. which one is it? Flatbush? Yes, the Flatbush monster. Is that specifically that one? Uh, they all have Flatbushes. So, I want to see it. A little bit of a, a, of a breakdown oh, wow. of the characters that, that are relevant in this, uh, in this particular story arc, in these two story arcs, is uh, we have like the two main characters, Momo Ayase, who is kind of like... Uh, uh, your typical high school girl, you know, she's got boy troubles. She's got, uh, she, she's a, I don't want to say that she's got a little bit of a hellion, but you know, you get the impression that she's, uh, a, a little bit of a toughest nails girl compared to like her friends who are a little more like, they, they look like Yaru, right? Um, I think they are at least one of them is. Yeah. At least one of them is. Uh, and then you have Okarun, who is your your nerdy kid. He he believes in aliens and stuff, and you know he's kind of like the punching bag for the bullies in his class. Um, he's friendless. Yeah, he is friendless. Additionally, we have Momo's grandmother, who is entirely too young to be a grandmother. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, we have a couple of uh, other characters, such as the aliens, uh, who are the Seropians. Uh, they're from planet Serpo. The aliens, they were creepy. They all look the same. There's more to the aliens later on. I can't get into it. I'd rather be attacked by a yokai than the aliens, if that's the, if I have to choose between one or the other. Uh, they're the, yeah, Serpoians. Do they the, ever the come clones? back? Yeah. Are they only in episode one? Uh, or chapter one? They're, they're on chapter one. You'll see more of them if the, if you decide to continue reading the manga. Um, okay. And so there's Yeah, the, they're supposed to be clones. There's those guys, and then we have the ghost called Turbo Granny. My opinion on Turbo Granny. She takes my nuts. She needs to go away. There's no A for butts about it. You don't mess with the bolas. Even if I get cool superpowers, you don't mess with the bolas. Um, so th this this manga is wild because the characters are really out there, right? Um, but so I, I guess I, I'm going to start by saying, you know, you guys, I, I made you read this. Uh, give me your takes. Like, uh, let's start. Let's, let's be honest. That first chapter, <laughs> that first chapter is pretty bad. The I don't know that it's bad. I mean, like, it caught my attention when I read it. Uh, but it, it is uh, it is something that if you're not ready for it, it will punch you in the face. Like, because it, it's got a lot of things that you would never in a million years expect. Um, so, I agree. He Helix, uh, let's, let's go ahead and get started with you, since uh, it seems like you're the one that didn't take to this title more than, uh, than Sacro did. So, give us your thoughts. Like, what do you think? At least the first chapter. Like, I read, I read through the first chapter, and I'm just like, yeah, this feels more like another uh, DX high school DXD one. I kept reading, <laughs> I kept reading, and I was like, this is getting worse and worse. Because <laughs> the clones were like, yeah, literally. Once Turbo Granny started talking about taking your schlong, I was like, <laughs> why? I remember that was your, those were your exact words. In fact, you got, you dropped in the chat. Like I read chapter one, dot, dot, dot. Why? <laughs> it's like, it, it's like, it's barely a story though. Like, well, you gotta, you gotta keep in mind that, you know, like you, it, you read one chapter, chapter at that one? point. Yeah. So like, it, I know it's well, pretty complete. It's super long too. And there's a lot going on. It is kind of a long chapter too, that I will give it that. I do believe that the, that first chapter was the first, the first two chapters were 60 pages. Yeah. I was going to say it was in the neighborhood of like 30 some odd pages, which is weird for a manga chapter. Cause they're usually about 10. The 20, the, the, all, the, all the other ones are 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's got long chapters. So you're you're not wrong about that. Uh, well, the first two were long. After that, it's like named actually. Pages per chapter. You know what? Like mm. uh, according to the Shonen Jump app, which I have open right now, so that I can look at chapter one. The first chapter is sixty-seven pages, and mm -hmm. chapter two is fifty-two oh. pages. So they yeah. they are they are long chapters, dude. Like no kidding. That so I basically read an entire book. Uh, nice. I mean, yeah, like it because when you really look at it, like in the usually a manga book will have like in the neighborhood of ten chapters, but the uh, the first uh, book of Don to Don has half of that. It has five chapters total, so they were long chapters. Uh, uh -huh. But yeah, like uh, uh, anyway, Helix, I interrupted you. Carry on. Uh, you're fine. Um, after the first, like when after they finally escaped from the uh, the UFO. Mm -hmm. I, I, I around there, I, it was starting to get better, but still, like the whole trans uh, transfer through the phone thing, he did that once and he was never able to do it again. Mm -hmm. The uh, what else? I don't think they ever tried it again. Now, I was gonna say, I, they I were think together that, the entire time uh, after that. I, I think that the thing about that is that, it, that at that point, it was Turbo Granny piloting the body, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's fair. Mm -hmm. Maybe Turbo Granny was did that. Just the, kept making the same jokes too, mm -hmm. and then they had to go and uh, try to find the dude's uh, testicles. After that, it's just like really. <laughs> like, yeah. there, there's a. I'm seeing a pattern here. Helix is a, like, oh, there was talk of schlongs, and then they had to go find testicles. What am I reading? <laughs> I mean, it's your typical like setup, but with weird items instead of what they usually have. That's true. Instead of trying to find the one piece, they're finding testicles, you know? We're not finding, like, it, it's not the Shikon jewel, it's the family jewels. <laughs> yeah, that's essentially what it feels like, is there's the same setup we've had in pretty much every other 
like manga of this style, but this time it's really weird choices. So, all right. So, Sacro, I, I, uh, let, let's hear let's hear your take on it. Uh, well, in the first chapter, I just I it, there's some things I don't like in stories when they do, mm-hmm. and one of them is fan service right away in a weird way, mm-hmm. and that was they had her like well, she's not naked, she's in her oh. underwear, but she uh, spread eagle, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I hate when they do this. This is my, when it comes to manga, there's like so much stuff they do that I don't like that are very japanese as I call them, in their media. Mm. They're just not for me. But I've been reading them for so long, and like the older I get, the more I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to put up with that, actually. Mm-hmm. And so I put down a lot of stories because if they do too much of something, I'm just like, yeah, no, I'll just, I'm fine. That's fair. Comics do a lot of stuff, too, I don't like. Like, I used to put up with a lot of stuff comics did. Uh, and I'm like, nah, I'm not done with that too. I would argue that comics are getting worse about it, you know, because like uh, the, it seems almost like uh, for a long time it was assumed that comic books were a kid's medium. Uh, and it feels like the comic book industry has been trying to break out of that uh, that typecast for a long time. And that the way that they have been doing it is by just really leaning darker hard into darker. into darker themes. As a matter of fact, I can't read The Boys because I feel like The Boys is very aggressively that. And well, The Boys, aggressively in your the boys is, yeah, The Boys is completely different though. It's a deconstruction of the comic book industry at the time because the dude who wrote it, mm-hmm. complete sadist, who was the edgiest of people. Yeah, yeah, around, you know, he would, he would do, he would do some, cre- like, he would go to a community of whatever member and shout whatever racial slur at them mm-hmm. just to get, an, you know, Oh, I'm edgy. Look how funny I am, kind of thing. Yeah. And his stories were bad. He has a lot of um, like sexual assault topics yeah. in his thing. There's a kid who gets his tongue cut off because yeah. he's he he pretty much takes every character and makes them the worst possible thing they can be, and, and, and they're just not good. I at agree all. with that. And you know, like here's the thing. Uh, me personally, I like stories about good guys, and I feel like I really dislike the way that modern media has kind of like taken that darker tilt because you know, like I, I remember whenever Game of Thrones was airing, everybody tried to convince everybody that it was a great show. Oh my gosh, so fantastic! Because you know, yeah, there, Game of Thrones. because there's no such thing as a good guy in the story. And I'm like, what is the appeal of it then? Like, I don't understand. Like, so you're gonna Who do you root for? Yeah, you know, like, well, not only that, but it's like, so you're gonna make me watch a show about just a bunch of assholes being assholes to each other. I'm like, I can't, I can't get hey, behind man. that, you know? Always Sunny in Philadelphia does it great. Well, there's a difference. In Sunny, Always Sunny in Philadelphia doesn't try to pretend that, you know, like this is okay. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> like, they don't pretend it's okay either. The, the books are just. So the, the period of like dark and edgy content was like 10 years ago. It yeah. ended around 2020 ish, 2019, 2018 was when the comics stopped being overtly edgy. So that that's not even here anymore. We're, we're way past. Well, it, we're, you know, at like, least four years past. If, that. If, I can, if I can put it like, you know, just like you know uh it just in a way that it kind of like feels to me it's like i recently watched deadpool and, and there was a conversation like uh in the movie where deadpool looks at wolverine and he's wearing like the suit right like the yellow x-men suit and uh you know he's like finally you're dressing like you're not embarrassed to be in a superhero movie and like i feel like that's exactly what comics were like for a long time it's like they're ashamed of being superhero books and like not just comics, but TV and media in general, like you're ashamed mm-hmm. of being objectively what you are, you know, like and I feel like that's so wrong. I'm like, dude, like if you're going to be cringe, embrace the cringe, you know, like just embrace the wholeness of what your genre is and like stop trying to deconstruct it by being edgy. That's so dumb. See, but- I think one thing that they try to do as well, though, is not necessarily deconstruct it. They try to also find a different way to do a story that's been beaten to death, I guess, is the best way to say it. Put it on to Don? Well, like Don to Don. Because that's essentially what it is. <laughs> well, there's only so many ways you can tell a style of story. So mm. adding in limits, adding in... Tr- uh, new tropes uh, you can only do so much and I mean, that's been the manga scene for like the last 20 years mm-hmm. like naruto so, bleach dragon ball z and one piece kind of set the stage in their early chapters for what a, a shonen anime or manga could be mm. and no one's tried to break that mold yet uh, everyone's just said we can do that but what instead of ninjas or pirates or i get soul reapers i don't know what they're called uh, Grim Reapers, I guess. Right. What if they're... Soul Reapers? 
Well, yeah, Soul Reapers is what they call in America. I think they're they're literally uh, Shikigami. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sh- Shinigami, correct. Shikigami is a different thing. Yeah, those things. But like every single one just takes the the core concept of a shonen, which is fine, and then adds something new to it. We already have the superhero one. We have Chainsaw Man, which I don't know what their specific niche is. I've never read it. It's uh, they have like the it's a little ghost horror. Or yeah, like it's a little bit horror. It's a little bit like oh gosh, how I, I described uh, Chainsaw Man as like if Quentin Tarantino wrote a manga. It's how it feels. See, and I felt like My Hero Academia was like X Men in Japan. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, like I thought that too. <laughs> like this is X Men well, like anime. X Men. Yeah, because <laughs> mm. instead of hating the X Men, they all love them. Mm. Yeah, so that's it's like true. they they didn't, they didn't get the point of X Men if they were trying to copy X Men. Well, I, no, you haven't read it all the way until the end because it does kind of start getting in that place where it's like, oh no, superpowers. Oh no, like uh, it it starts being like a, we hate uh, the people who who look like they have a superpower that could hurt you. And uh, there, there's this whole talk about like specifically like the powers that deform people, you know, so like uh, the people who look like animals and stuff like that, like people start reacting with, to them with fear because it's like, oh, well, and, and there's a whole story behind it. But anyway, uh, done to done. Yeah. So the first chapters, <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty stock standard. It's the weirdness of it is like the schlong piece and they were going to take her reproductive organs away mm-hmm. uh, well, they wanted and, to mate with her because they needed to get the what was it the feelings to the banana to organs yes like they they needed to get uh, so i mean there was an explanation for it right and it it, it feels like a bad yeah. explanation but i feel like also like if aliens were trying to communicate with people i feel like a lot of things would get lost in translation too so, like, the idea is we reproduced by cloning for so long that, like, our diversity died off, our feelings died off, we have nothing, mm-hmm. you know, like, we're we're just so homogenous, and we're trying to get that back. So, we're trying to get that back by interbreeding with humans, and... Uh, is this, like, a, is this like a, a shot at or a jab at Japan in general? Because they're, that's their problem. Yikes. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're homogenous in every way, and it's... Led to declines and everything, and no, a bad mm-hmm. economy, and like, yeah. And uh-huh. they're also cutting off people coming there now. They're charging extra. There's this thing where restaurants will have English menus, mm-hmm. which have the foreigner tax on it. So if you use that, you pay more money because you're a foreigner. They found uh-huh. it at several places in a recent I heard, study. I know that there was like the racism in Japan's pretty real too. Like, it's really bad. Yeah, th- mm-hmm. they'll uh, if if you're a foreigner, they won't let you into certain markets or certain. Uh, they do this. Or... So they do this X thing with their hands for no foreigner. Like you're not allowed. Uh, oh, we okay. had it happen a few times when we were there. Yeah, they call us round eyes. Is that <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that's it's not like the most hurdy thing, but it's that's their thing. They say you know, mm-hmm. like I I thought it was funny, but I'm also like this is crazy. Like I've had less racism ever anywhere i've been in the, in the world than in japan mm. unrelated to what we're talking about though right uh the don uh yeah it, it, i feel like the reasons they were doing things is just to so get quick fan service and man, i don't know who the art like the artist was behind this but they they love mini skirts it, it is skirts in general the author yoki nobutatsu who does the story and the art so there's a scene in i can't remember which of the chapters but she's wearing like a, a tight fitting skirt not mm. like a mini skirt, not like a flowy one. And she's sitting down and you can just see like the perfect like ripple of her butt cheeks, like drawn every detail. I'm like this guy has studied this forever. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a little too horny for me, but they stopped doing that all the time. But I could see it every once in a while. I'm like, okay, okay, this guy's a type. This guy's a thing he likes. Age or old, thing. I would like to know his location because supposedly like whenever he was drawing one piece, uh, like especially when he got to Egghead, his uh, whole... And I don't know how true this is, but I heard that there was like a, a question and answer thing. It was like, what, what are your goals with that kid? He's like, I would like to perform the, uh, perfect, perfect the drawing of female butts. And uh, this is explains why Nami and Robin are wearing those outfits. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Supposedly. They have like pencil thin waist and giant boobs. That's his women's style. All of his women look like that, and then his men look like whatever he felt like that morning. His women's style? <laughs> That's my women's style too, baby. Anyway, done the done. <laughs> <laughs> the olive oil style Ugh. yes <laughs> but uh so yeah like i hear what you're saying it, it feels like uh don to don is um is your typical like so for example uh 
there's a lot of uh, anime out there that deal with the paranormal. We t- we're talking ghost stories. We're talking uh, Kikaishi. We're talking, you know, like, heck. Jujutsu you, Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen, yeah, you, I was going to say. You t- I think there was one Cartoon Network, not Cartoon Network, Toonami had. It was the, the Kekai. Yu Yu Hakusho? The Kekaishi? No. Oh. Yeah. It was... I, I think, think, think Kakashi was. I think it's it is Kakashi. Yeah, like the, it was. It ran for a very short amount of time because you know it just didn't receive the standing ovation that everybody was hoping for. Yeah, it was. The, it was like the, the squ- everything had to be trapped in that square in uh, that in the school. Yes. Yeah, the Kekai Genkai, and then they can blow it up or whatever. Right, right. Kekai Genkai. Kekai Genkai is a Naruto thing, but you got the right spirit. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's been multiple years since I've seen it. I don't have my phone on me, so I don't know. What, I don't. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, not look but, anything up. Uh, additionally, uh, we also have like the one that Sacro brought up uh, whenever we were talking about the title that started at all, which was uh, what's it called, Nura: Rise of the Yokai Clan, right? So there's a lot of like paranormal stuff. Yeah, that's a very popular one in, in Japan. But not anymore. Uh, <laughs> and so, like, it, it almost feels like you can't just tell the same story. You have to do something that helps you stand out. And I feel like Yokinobu Tatsu has a, a interesting way of approaching this in that he makes it. He makes it funny, you know, like, so it's not just like, yeah, we're, we're hunting yokai or, you know, we're encountering spirits or we're doing this, we're doing that. He's like, we're not just encountering yokai, we're encountering yokai and we're just like high schoolers, you know, we have no business doing this. Like, if you, if you're encountering yokai, there's a, there's a higher chance that you'll behave like Momo and Okarun than you will just be an Ichigo Kurosaki, you know what I mean? Or a, a Yuji, because let's let's be honest, it's probably closer to Jujutsu Kaisen than it is to yeah. So it is well, more, well, it is closer to Jujutsu Kaisen than Blee. So it's less likely that you're gonna be like a Yuji Itadori who is like you know takes to fighting spirits very quickly, and it's more likely that you're gonna do a lot of this. You're gonna do a lot of running away. You're gonna try to figure it out on the fly, mm-hmm. and you're you're gonna be struggling I mean, it, to stay alive the entire time, right? And also it, one it's thing that beat I beat up a lot too in the beginning, yeah. One of the things that I do love too, though, is that uh, they they develop powers from their encounters with the with you know the things that they encounter, right? So Momo, uh, when the aliens try to like sedate her using their psychokinesis, yeah. uh, awakens her her medium powers, and Okarun, when he's possessed by Turbo Granny, uh, happens to steal her powers. So now he's super fast. So they they both get these powers. But the thing I is, I felt like that was such a. Pl- uh, uh... A plot armor thing right there. It's like, oh yeah, it was in you. You couldn't control it, but mm-hmm. now you can. Well, well he, she made a he, he reference still... to her grandma having the powers already. So that's where she got them from. That's true. Yeah, she did. She did say that her grandma had. And as a matter of fact, there was no, that whole. Not, sh- oh, you're talking not, about Okarun. The... Okarun, yeah. Because yeah, let's yeah. be honest, he, he he's just a normal kid, and he, somehow he ends up being able to trap the uh, granny's energy inside him. Like, uh, he can't, though. Yeah, no, he traps it. Yeah, so Momo traps it. And additionally, uh, if you, you know, because up to the point where we've read, they still don't have 100% full control of these powers. You know, like they're, yeah. they're figuring it out as they go. And Okarun can only go max for a couple of seconds at a time, half the time, you know? He says he's going to do it twice I feel you. before he dies. I feel you, Okarun. Yeah, so he can. <laughs> We're same. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, you know, like uh, it, it is trying to do a lot of things different. It is trying to be more comedic. It's trying to be more lighthearted, uh, mm-hmm. and it the the people don't take to their powers right away. They're usually it to me. It felt like the entire time that I'm reading this, they are fumbling their way to victory, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I love that about it. You know, like it's so it's so fun. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, I agree with what Sekro is saying. It does feel like, you know, he was trying a lot to be different for, for the sake of standing out. And I don't know how mm-hmm. much that is, uh, on purpose or how much all of that is his own personality, you know, cause like as a writer, your personality inev- inevitably shows in whatever you're writing. Um, mm-hmm. so I- I'm kind of right there where I don't know how to, how to feel of like, it was this 100% on purpose or are you just this kind of funny guy? You know what I mean? I mean, I didn't really laugh at any of this stuff, but it was funny in a way. <laughs> like, it's it's supposed to be funny. Like, it's like, okay, I mean, haha, that's cool. Yeah, it had its good part, but because everything's funny. Like, anything and anything can, can have funny parts. Yeah. It's just, I felt like the overall story is just so overdone. How, uh, so the, the, the stuff is trying to lean into more, which I don't know if it leads into later. How much do you guys know about the connection between paranormal and UFOlogy? Uh, so look, we can, we can do an entire video on this, like an entire, 
like uh, episode on this because Sekiro, like this is a this is a topic I can talk about a lot. And in Don to Don specifically, I have theories for how things are working. I, I I'm not fully caught up, but I'm like in the neighborhood of like a hundred chapters in. And uh, it's my theory that the way that the world of Don to Don is built is uh, just just based on the things that I've seen. Uh, there is aliens who are trying to invade, but they can't get through because yokai are like the Earth's immune system to paranormal invasion. Uh, th- this is this is my theory. I could be one hundred percent wrong. Like I just completely off base. Like I do not understand, but it feels to me that way because it feels like every time an alien shows up, like a yokai shows up too to just kind of like present an yeah. issue. Uh, so like, they definitely make inferences that they same thing happens to each other, with, or that there's uh, a correlation between both of them. Because even in the first chapter, mm-hmm. it's yeah. talking about that. Even in the first chapter, it is talking about that. And there, there is the whole thing that you know when Turbo Granny shows up in the UFO, she kind of wails on the aliens, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, it is, it is my, and you know, like, hey, you know what? Visit us on at the battle phase on X and tell me how wrong I am, you know, like, cause it feels to me like that's where this was supposed to go. And I might be 100% off base. So, I mean, like, just it, let, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, but yeah, so like, uh, that, that's kind of where the correlation is here. Now, if we're talking about in real life, uh, I personally subscribe to the, to the belief that aliens, UFOs, ghosts, paranormal things are all different ways of seeing the same thing. Uh, I'm kind of like in the um, blind people trying to make sense of an elephant, uh, you know, camp mm-hmm. of believing in this stuff. Where it's like the person touching the trunk believes that or believes that it's a snake. The person touching the leg believes that it's a tree, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But like I, I do believe that like paranormal phenomenon, whether they be like sci fi or like horror based, uh, are probably more connected than we than we think. Mm hmm. Okay. I mean, I've I've done extensive research into UFOlogy all the way back to the sightings of whatever on the highways in 1952. I can't remember the year. Oh, was. like with like Betty and Barney Hill. Uh, further back, obviously. I um, honestly haven't done too much like uh, into that stuff, so I'm not entirely knowledgeable on it. Moth, uh, Mothman, Smasher Pass. Yeah, yeah, Mothman started it all actually. The Smasher well, Pass, sake, bro. <laughs> I mean, it was before that too, but it was like it that was the me big that moment. you're missing the question. <laughs> We're uh, diving under the question. <laughs> anyway, carry on. Okay, so have you seen the statue of Mothman? That's a that's a smash for sure. <laughs> it actually has to. They have to check its butt because everyone smacks it on their way through the <laughs> West Virginia area. I know what? that. I have friends who went to Mothman. They cheeked it up, bro. Yeah, they 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 caked up Mothman the statue, dude. And like, I have friends who went and they had pictures with Mothman's butt. <laughs> Just like guys, yeah. why? And they're like, we we touched it, and I was like, I imagine so. I don't think that there's anything bl- barring you from doing exactly that. They they had to sign up for a while because you could see it literally, like the paint was coming off from people slapping its butt every time it went by. God damn it! <laughs> yeah, that, people. That doesn't surprise me, dude. The horny controls everything. People get good at stuff because of the horny. I I became an artist because of the horny. Yes, you're very right. Anyway, uh, I had my assumptions. <laughs> uh but anyway so um yeah so that that's basically uh like what we feel uh down uh, you know just like in the basic general gist Uh, i personally like it i like that it's zany and weird Mm -hmm. i I like that it's funny you know like and i like that uh that it's not your typical thing uh sacro is right in that it has a little bit of etchy that can be a little a little on the weird side but I, i feel like it, it's probably more tame than a lot of. It's it's super anime. tame, yeah. Just, just, that first one is really just hard to get through. Yes, the it's first not even that one bad. It could be way worse. It, it could have been I've way, seen way worse. First this could have been a. Yeah. This could have been a like goblin slayer, dude. This yeah, like, been, it's not that bad. Or, yeah, or berserk. It's entirely not. Or berserk with the horse chapter. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I never read berserk, but I'm gonna assume it's. It's something I don't. Want to read it's exactly what you're assuming. Yes. Anyway. Ah, yeah. So. Uh, the horse chapter. The horse chapter. Anyway. Like uh, bestiality. Listen. 
No, don't you tell me that. Kentaro Miura goes hard, dude. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but uh, so is that hard? Or is that it, questionable? It's, it, 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 it's very weird. It's very okay. weird. And I wouldn't even call it a horse, to be honest. I, I don't know what that is, but I've never seen a horse look at something like that in my life. Anyway, um, so gosh where was i anyway so i like that it's weird and yet like it, it has it has a little bit of like weirdness that can be a little hard to stomach and i 100 mm -hmm. agree with that yeah uh so a couple of things that i wanted to talk about is uh let, let's uh get into the basic story plot uh we're gonna cover the first two story arcs so you know let's start with the turbo granny uh it's it's your basic setup story plot right you know we got momo and okaroon they become friends by chance uh, they engage in a dare, and uh, it turns out the aliens and ghosts are real. Now, Okaroon um, has, becomes possessed by Turbo Granny, Momo gets powers from aliens, and whenever they manage to escape, they find out that uh, his uh, Okaroon's junk is missing because Turbo Granny took it. Uh, and in order to get it back, they basically have to beat her. And this, this is where I, I start to really love the writing because, w hear me out, this sounds exactly like the kind of urban legend that you would hear, you know, like, hey, don't go into the tunnel, Turbo Granny will take your junk. And then, you know, like, uh, how do you beat her? This is a typical devil comes down to Georgia situation, right? The spirit that did you wrong has high hubris. So you challenge them at the thing that they're good at in order to get your stuff back. And you win by being clever and creative. And Well, in this scenario, they wanted to outrun her because... Once they got her away from the earthbound spirit, then she'd be weaker. Exactly. And so, like, again, that devil went down to Georgia thing. You know, you don't play exactly to their rule. I mean, the devil went down to Georgia is a bad example because you did play exactly to their rules. But, and he uh, lost because that kid could fiddle. And he <laughs> lost because that kid could fiddle. But you play to their hubris, and then you use that to be smarter. This is a Bugs Bunny type situation. You know, like, hey, you you, you let them believe that they that they got the upper hand on you. And then as a trickster, you kind of like pull the rug out from underneath them, right? Uh, so you, may, you challenge Turbo Granny to a race. But the moment that she exits her territory, suddenly she doesn't have the same power. So... Well, it was more because she was combined with an earthbound spirit that she was so much stronger... Right. Than just being by herself because they, she even, the granny even, or the grandmother of the main character even mentions that. I think her name she, is Seiko. I don't remember. I'm, I, I suck at names. It's Seiko, yeah. Yeah. Seiko. But yeah. She, she had mentioned that they didn't want to mess with her this early. or Nobody wanted to mess with her because she was actually helping other spirits pass on. Mm hmm. Uh, it is Seiko. Um, now, that said, it, nobody wanted. It, the tunnel where Turbo Granny was, and this is kind of like a thing that Don to Don will do over and over and over again. It'll set up a premise uh, in the typical way that you would hear like a, a, a rumor or an urban legend or a, or some conspiracy theorists talk about it on a YouTube video. And then you'll go there and you'll encounter something terrifying. But then mm -hmm. beneath the terrifying thing, you'll find something weirdly wholesome and tragic. Because uh, as it turns out, Turbo Granny wasn't really that bad at all. She was visiting places where uh, high school girls had been murdered by a serial killer, kind of trying to provide them comfort. And ultimately, whenever Okarun and Momo beat her and beat the earthbound spirit that was that was attached to her, all of those high school girl spirits that were trapped there because of that spirit managed to pass on to the other side. It's a it's a little bit of a weird thing that Donda Don does, and it does it every single time. Like I never expect for it to hit me in the feels the way it does, but it does. Mm -hmm. and, and so, like, so wait, we're getting the oh no, I killed the demon, but it was actually a good person this time, and again, mm -hmm. and and that time again. And by the way, this guy's also was a good person before they came a demon. I'm sorry, we had to kill you, friend. Well, it, of Demon Slayer, not really. Like, so Demon Slayer is weird because Demon Slayer is like I. You kill these demons knowing full well that they were once human. Uh, so like it, it's like they were once human, but they are no longer. You don't have a choice because there there's no going back. Uh, but additionally, because they were human, it was inevitable that they were going to have human experiences, and uh, mm. you know some of them become demons willingly some of them not so much you know so it, it's kind of like one of those things uh demon slayer does have a tendency to kind of lean into it where it's like 
Uh, every single time we kill a demon, we're going to find out that they were hugely misunderstood and they made a lot of bad choices. In Don to Don, it's, is, it's literally every time. Yeah. Yeah. The first, <laughs> second. I, I, I honestly didn't like Demon Slayer, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Demon Slayer is all right. Demon Slayer is pretty good. I, I I enjoy the anime more than I enjoy the manga, but it's because let's let's face it, UFO table is like firing on all cylinders with that animation, man. It is wow. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, but so Don 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 will will kind of do that a little bit, but like it's it's not always like hey, the demon was the good guy. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of the times it'll be like there was a good guy affected by the demon. Or like maybe maybe just because we don't understand something, it doesn't make it bad. It just makes it you know something that's trying to survive. Uh, so mm -hmm. th there's kind of like a lot of that. I mean, that's that's still the demon slayer thing. Then uh, a lot of them are literally they got turned into demons and now they have to do this thing to survive. Yeah, uh, but there's also let's see, uh, you you really really got to read up to the cult chapter because there's a lot of things uh, in Don to Don that it's like this goes beyond humanity. This is there's like some things that are in, inexplicable, incomprehensible, uh, and there are things that like go beyond our ken, uh, sort of. Uh, so like, like we, our ken, like arcane or no beyond our ken as in beyond our understanding. Oh, okay, right. Sorry. You're talking about like. Uh, What's his name? H.P. Lovecraft type stuff or more like a we just can't understand you a little bit. Yeah, because I mean, like and dude, like I, I swear you you really should read it because I do not want to spoil any of this for you. Don, Don is better like experience, like no. Yeah, no spoilers. I mean, I'll read it. Uh, the, the end of the second arc, though, the, with the girl, I was like, oh, hey, I've seen this before. <laughs> So, I said that a few times while reading it. I was like, the, "Oh, okay, I've seen this before." Yeah, the, no. the new one that was the one that stole that had the other golden ball. Yeah, the so the, yeah. the the other girl that had the golden ball, and her name is two seconds something. Uh, uh, Lucky something. Hold on, Akira. It's whatever uh, it wants to be. It's Ira. Uh, let's see. E Ira. I, I keep That's what the. I said. I keep the, what do you call it, the manga volumes next to me because they have like a dossier at the very front. Uh, Ira Shiratori, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, th that's the second story arc is, uh, you know, uh, and I believe, and again, everybody, if if you're out there listening and I'm wrong, go ahead and go to x.com at the battle phase and let me know how wrong I am. But I believe Bard that this... loves to know how, mu how much he's wrong, believe me. No, yes, tell me how wrong I am. I love it. I, I eat that stuff up. Like, because no matter how many times you tell me I'm wrong, I will not stop being wrong on purpose. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, I believe, and this is this is me speculating because of the design of the character known as Acrobat Selkie, which is the yokai that they encounter in in the second story arc. That uh, I believe, based on her design specifically, that she's that new yokai that's uh, that's kind of been. Subject of a lot of popularity in Japan recently, Hashaku Sama, who is it's a yokai basically that if you've ever played a Resident Evil game, have you? Mm -hmm. it's All a, of them. It's a it's a stalker enemy. You know, like how stalker enemies you can't the ones you kill can't them. Kill. They can't you can't kill them, but they follow you. And so Hashaku Sama is a kind of and the name literally translates to eight foot tall. It, it is a spirit that is an eight foot tall woman wearing all white and she just stalks you and that's it well she's wearing red in the in she's the wear, she's wearing red in the manga yes a red one piece all right uh but like just off of her design and especially in the in the scenes after you know after we like hear hear her story which her story is tragic um mm. but like after we see her story like there's these uh there's these couple of panels where she's a ghost now but we see her face and I'm like yeah, that looks very much like every Hashaku-sama artwork that I've ever seen. Like, it, it is, it, it looks very much like it to me. But, uh, yeah, she's wearing red in the manga, uh, uh, allegedly wearing red. It's in black and white, but, you know, <laughs> like, she's allegedly yeah, wearing red. Yeah, they make the... reference of it twice. Right. Uh, but, yeah, mm -hmm. like, and this is this is kind of like one of the things that, you know, because for the longest time, uh, I always wondered, um, you know, and this is, I read a lot of manga, so, like, some things, mm -hmm. sometimes, I, some things don't even re register, right? Uh, but Don to Don, if you've ever picked up one of the volumes from like a Barnes and Noble or like a, a, a bookstore or Books a Million, whatever, uh, on the cover, it always says explicit content. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, there's no nudity in Don to Don. There's no graphic violence. I don't understand what uh, what, what this is all about. Um, 
but I believe that the explicit content that they're referring to is kind of like the the nature of what's in the story, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, this this the story of Akrabah Selkie specifically was was kind of really heavy, you know, because like it's a it's a, a mom, you know, doing everything she can, working several jobs to provide for her for her daughter. And ultimately, it looks like a gang or something decides that, you know, she's not paying them back fast enough. I guess she must have gotten in debt with loan sharks. There's a lot that isn't said, but like you can you kind of piece together via via like what's happening in the in the pages, which the pages had like no sound effect, nothing. It was just images. Um, And like it looks like they decide, OK, you can't pay us. We're taking your kid and we're beating you up. And she chases after them and eventually realizing that she'll never find her daughter again she she'll never be able to catch up to them and even if she did i imagine she would have nothing that she could do for them she decides to just end it all and uh mm -hmm. it is gosh it is storytelling without using a single word and this is a, uh, this is why i love like you know graphic novels comics and stuff like that cuz you can do stuff like this where you don't have to tell me anything but suddenly i understand more than you would have that i would have understood if you had just told me you know um, mm. but yeah, the, this, uh, this was definitely, you know, I liked it from the very beginning, but this was kind of like a solidifying point for me where I was like, this is definitely something that I'm willing to read because I love it when stories hurt me like this. <laughs> you know, like I, that's just, yeah, I prefer not being sad Yeah, like, in my, uh, lighthearted, haha, I took a schlong manga. <laughs> yeah. Here's a joke about, uh, slavery maybe, or, uh, organ harvesting or whatever they could have been doing with this girl. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, thanks for showing me this. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, anyways, um, now I that, guess I feel bad for her. I, I guess. That is true. Like it's never said what they're going to do with the, with the toddler. Uh, it is impossible applied with the last little bit as Ira is saying bye to uh to Acrobat Selkie that her daughter is dead because she says let them find peace in a kinder world and they're both holding hands in the afterlife and also my thoughts about Acrobat Selkie yeah she's pretty cool I like the fact that all her attacks are ballet oriented and the story of her how she how she got her powers and some monster that protects her that was uh, that was quite touching i i like that this series is gonna be amazing as long as they don't censor anything it's gonna be amazing so yeah so they probably just organ took uh, their organs and sold them on the black market they organs probably did and, and this is mm. this is kind of like the explicit content of don to don because these are things that like it, it doesn't tell you but you can kind of see it you know like it so even though in my in my world, I, I like to think that maybe like the the girl's dad, because you don't see the girl's dad at all. Uh, the mm -hmm. girl's dad was the head of the gang and he just decided to take his daughter. Um, I think that Sacro is actually more correct. And I do believe that this was. Well, we, we see the ghosts meet up, supposedly meet up at the end. Yeah. And she's still a, a kid. And she's still so, a kid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that could just and that be... had to happen years ago because she meets. The one girl by accident when she's a kid, right? They called her mommy. Yeah, yeah. And like attached herself to her. Mm hmm. Um. So. But uh, I I hear what what you guys are saying. Like it's weird when like it's like hey chapter one let me swallow your schlong chapter seventeen I lost my daughter to you know to like mm -hmm. to people and I couldn't protect her and now I'm a sad ghost. I'm like, whew. Cool but. Story, bro. <laughs> yeah, it, it it is one of yeah. those things that I love though. I I love it whenever like uh, I don't know where, when because this is this is a very real thing. Tragically, you know, like it is a real thing that happens in the real world, um, and it sucks. You know, it really does. Uh -huh. Um, in stories though, I love it when stories don't let you forget that just because you know like something is wonderful and whimsical that there is bad in the world. And, uh, but at the same time, it's also kind of like a, a little bit of a bittersweet thing because it's like, yeah, you know, uh, you were tied to this world because of what happened to you. Um, but you know, be at peace, mm -hmm. you know, like you, you touched a life, whether you intended to or not. And, and you know, like carry on. Carry on my wayward son. Mm -hmm. So is anyone feeling kind of cheapened by the message when you really think about it? How so? Because like for five seconds we got a basic backstory of this 
thing they're fighting so we could feel bad for it. Like, oh. there's, there's a moment where you think about it where you're like, okay, cool. Okay, yeah, you're trying to make me feel bad for this thing that just died. Like, I get it. I get why that's done. But I, I got so desensitized to it because it happened so many times in Demon Slayer that I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't need it anymore. I don't care if the thing has a sad, tragic story about their life. Well, I don't care. You'll be happy. They're be eating babies. So Kill them. You'll be happy to know in the upcoming story arc, uh, you'll find uh, nothing that you need to be sad for because it's the Loch Ness monster. Uh, so they fight the Loch Ness monster in their school, believe it or Le- not. <laughs> oh yeah, because Lo- yeah, because you know Scotland and. The pan are so close to each other. Like, as a matter of fact, Scotland is inside of their high school. How did you, how did that get there? <laughs> can we can we also talk about the fact that every single manga has to have teenage characters as their main characters? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, do you, we the, out of the stories we've covered, we've had like one. I think they're not teenagers. Gaijin number eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that was such a good story because he's literally an adult. He's 34, 32, 30, mm-hmm. 32 or 34. I can't remember. Now, hear me out on this. It's it's not like a, a thing that happens in American comics. No, but like there's so many young adult novels that are published all the time where that's exactly the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like off the top yeah, of my head, Harry Potter, always... City of Bones. I mean, like Percy Jackson. I mean, like the, it, it's a phenomenon everywhere you go. And there's a reason for it. it and... <laughs> Somebody pointed it out. I don't remember if it was on Twitter or what, but somebody had pointed it out that says like, well, there's a reason that Shonen uh, based around like, you know, teenagers, because when you're a teenager, you want to fight for everything. You want to <laughs> save the world. Uh, sign in titles, you know, were, were, or like, you know, like older adult titles, uh, like, you know, campfire cooking in another world with my absurd skill or, you know, like anything else. You just want to chill, man. <laughs> like, you, 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 you're done fighting. You just want to like take it easy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the mass amount of manga is teenage characters, though. Right. I mean, like the, a lot of the what we get here in the West, I feel like is teenage characters. I feel like there's probably like a lot of manga that we never get here because they feel like there isn't an audience for it. Um, and I, I feel like that's also changing. Um, supposedly, and this is something that I I, I heard recently. But the reason why, uh, you know. It is speculated that the reason why uh, manga titles aren't going for as long as they used to, you know, like because it used to be the case that if a manga was doing well, your editors would never let you close it. Never. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, But like a lot of the reasons why they now they're like, oh, you want to end Jujutsu Kaisen? Yeah, okay, go ahead and conclude it. Or like you want to end My Hero Academia? Yeah, you got it. Go for it is because uh, that way they can keep new titles rotating in all the time. So that way they can cater to like foreign audiences because in foreign Fresh audiences, yeah, you know, like there's new stories, there's new genres, there's new characters. You know, it's it's like that way you're not – oh, and there's a lot of different types of things going on too. Like so, for example, I don't know if you noticed, but like uh, Kaguya-sama Love is War is a Shonen Jump title, but it's not a battle manga. Uh, the Elusive Samurai, kind of the same thing, you know, like – and like just all kinds mm-hmm. of things that, that are changing. Like Free Ren Beyond Journey's End is, is a – you know, is a – popular title but it's not it's not like a shonen battle it's not anything like that it's actually kind of like a more quiet more reflective thing mm-hmm. and i a lot of battles in it though it does have a it does have battles in it uh in the manga they don't seem to go as long as they do in the anime like in the anime like the the there was a couple of things where i was like okay yeah this this went on for a while uh, longer than it did in the manga 100 and i don't mm-hmm. hate it you know because it's like you're elaborating on a good thing that's fine um, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, like, I feel like that that's kind of like a lot of what's happening is, uh, you know, like titles are being different and, and weirder and not sticking to the same, you know, formulas that they did back in the past because foreign audiences have started liking manga and anime. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you know, like it, it's, we want to try new things to see what kind of audiences we can catch with it. I don't know how true that is, but if I suddenly started making a lot of money, off of like things that I did, I would want to know what my audience is watching. I would want to That's know fair. what what they're reacting to, so that way I could like put new things out there for them to fall in love with. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have deviated so far away from Don to Don. Anyway, um, so I went ahead and like gave an outline for the two story arcs that we covered. Uh, I'd love to hear if you guys have any further thoughts on that. What do you mean? I don't have anything specific, honestly. 
uh, you know, like about the story arcs. Like, uh, what did you think the, they did well? What did you think need work? What did you think uh, of the characters introduced, uh, the power scaling, the, the the way that the powers developed? I mean, there really hasn't been too much power development other than she's unlocked her powers and she's now doesn't have to use her eyesight. Yeah. I like the spirit hands thing. That's kind of cool. The spirit the hands dev- thing is kind of cool. The devil wings. <laughs> the yeah. devil wings, yes. Um, I've seen them before, but I like them. Um, I like the the slight romance between the two. Like, I'm not a huge fan of like main character romances. Like, right off the back, mm-hmm. I'm more of a fan of like an episode happens later down the line and it starts developing something. You know what's funny about that is that uh, this is apparently. Uh, I missed this entirely during my first run, right? Like whenever I first read this. But upon reading it back, I was like, oh, you intended this to happen all along, right? And, you know, like it, it is one thing like, hey, you know, you introduce two main characters. They're, they're going to fall in love, right? Like it is a thing to expect that. Uh, but whenever it's overtly stated, like so, for example, the first chapter, we see Momo break up with a, with a guy or the guy breaks up with mm-hmm. her. Uh, yeah. And, and she's, she says, well, I dated him because he looks like the actor Ken Takakura, this hard boiled guy. And, uh, you know, she's like, well, now I'm depressed because I'm never going to find my Ken Takakura. And it turns out that that's exactly Okarun's name. Uh, that was such a cop out. <laughs> it, like, it was more funny than a cop out. It, it was pretty me. funny to me because uh, it's like, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I'm looking for Ken Takakura to fall in love with. And it turns out that that's his exact name. And I'm like, oh, funny. And uh, they had the Naruto Sasuke kiss, too. Yeah. And they had like their Naruto Sasuke kiss. And uh, additionally, and everybody saw it and everybody saw it. And it it's it's funny. But here's the thing that I love about this. And you guys can tell me if you, if you agree with me or not. I love that they're reacting to this exactly as normal people would react to it. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, you got you guys kissed. And you're like, and they're like denying it, denying it, which is the typical tsundere thing. But additionally, now they're awkward around each other, which I'm like, see, you don't know. I mean, like this is played up so funny. And it's, it's especially better because you hear it from both of their their heads, right? Like you see their thought patterns as they're going like, mm-hmm. oh, OK, you know, like, well, things are awkward now. Uh, maybe I'm being weird. Maybe they don't want to be around me. And you see both of them going through it. I was like, this feels so different because like what would happen in other titles. And this happened in My Hero Academia a lot where Deku Mm -hmm. is 100 percent just like not in tune with any kind of romantic feelings whatsoever. And Uraraka is always blushing every time that somebody mentions that, you know, she's into him. Uh, Wait, but he makes no, he makes uh, a few references to her in the in the very beginning, actually. Yeah, kind of. He's like, oh, she's so pretty. I can't believe a girl talked to me. Oh, I, I like he does that right away. Like when they meet at the, after the the battle, right? Yeah, I think he's right. It, it yeah, kind of like disappears right away. after that though, because you know he's he's a he's a man of uh, of conviction and he's got bigger things to do. You know, he's got to save the world. But anyway, <laughs> but True. in this particular case, I feel like th- this feels so natural. Like, uh, it feels like it was re- written so that the characters feel, like, very real in the way that they're reacting to all this. Um, the may- popular girl, super attractive, with the dweeb, nerdy kid. Very natural. It happens. Damn it, sacral. <laughs> <laughs> Only in your I mean, it, it doesn't feel natural. It does happen, obviously. I've seen, like, especially where I live, there's a lot of, like, guys who don't feel like they're... That's rude to say they're not in the same thing as they're... <laughs> <laughs> basically like unattractive don't look like they take care of themselves and their girlfriends like you know pretty does her hair has good makeup takes care of herself works out and they do not <laughs> yeah and you can just tell no but that does happen but i also live in like a ruralish area it, it does happen city. but that being said like what, what i'm trying to get at here is and honestly i don't think that momo is that popular to be honest you see it kind of feels like a little bit of an outcast herself she's got friends you know but like they, shoot, in one of the I chapters had, they called her the most popular girl in school which chapter was that like, yeah and yeah. in the beginning they called her the most popular girl in school they I, did because they're like oh dude, the most popular girl in school just talked to blah blah it's like no what? shot hold on yeah you go back i just read it all today well i read parts of it again today but yeah you, you can go back and see it it's, it's real no shot. Give me a second. I'm I'm at the place where it would happen, like in the first chapter. <laughs> Not the first. It's in the first like one through five. I don't remember where it happened. Uh huh. It's like, at the school though. No, I I don't 
uh, I don't remember that being the case. I read these like yesterday. So, uh, but the thing is, mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm also no. But like, here's the thing though. Like, Momo actually has like this whole soliloquy at one point. Not not a soliloquy. I feel like that's too fancy of a way to say that. You know, she's having a flashback. But you know, like whenever she's talking about like her grandma teaching her, like you know, to to mm-hmm. like the ritual when she's walking home, and everybody would call her weird and stuff. And you know, but like so she she even mentions the only reason why she hated that was because they were making fun of her grandma. Right. But and like, then they showed the grandma and like the grandma is weird, but she's also like not a grandma. Like. How do we feel about the grandma? Firstly, is <laughs> I think it's a funny character. I don't know why she's a grandma. I don't. Yeah, I don't understand what they're I doing. Think it would have been better if it was just like a mother or aunt or something older like that. sister. It, honestly, I think if it was like an aunt, it would have been perfect. Yeah, like an and like an aunt or something. But like I, I, I'm just like holding on for like the the big reveal that there's a reason that she looks so young, you know. But like. I thought it was a Sonata type thing, to be honest. So, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so I, I'm yeah. kind of holding on for that to be the case. We'll see. Uh, but, so, anyway, like, it, it is kind of like a, a thing that I don't feel like she... I don't, I don't doubt that she's popular-ish, but I don't think that she's the most popular girl in school. I thought that the other girl was the most popular girl in school. Uh, yeah, the one that said that she was she, that she, she's going to save the world because she's cute. I guess she's yeah, the she's, prettiest. She's very, yes. Yeah, she's very pretty, but she's also in her own head. She is also it. in her own head about it. Yeah, a so narcissist. Like, uh, she is mm-hmm. kind of a narcissist. Yes, she likes to uh, play with guys because she's pretty and she knows they're not worth worth time. I just went back through chapter three and I forgot that the scene where they lifted her leg up and upskirts her basically, and she's about to eat, get eaten. There's so many of those. Things. Oh yeah, that that was a thing. I forgot. And about this is the that. first time you see the grandma. And literally, you just see down her shirt the every clip she's in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I take it back. There are there is some stuff where, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Japan. It is come Japan. on, Japan, calm down. But anyway, so I, I the thing about this is I feel like they're really not the most popular. Like I, I do feel like you know Momo has friends and she she's not she's not like an outcast or anything. But you know she also like I feel like she doesn't click with like the rest mm-hmm. of her class so much. Um. And Okarun obviously is the is the nerdy boy. So I mean, like, uh, if mm-hmm. anything, it, there's there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a disconnect in that she's more well adjusted than than he is. It kind of feels like, but at the mm-hmm. same time, you know, she's not like the prim and proper like Japanese schoolgirl type either. She's got kind of like a temper on her, and you know, like she's a little bit of aggressive too. I was trying to make a point. I don't remember what that point was. Lost your train of thought. Uh, I remember when she goes and sits by him and stops him getting bullied. Everyone's like, why did she, I, a beautiful girl, sit next I, to I him, say, a loser? I did like whenever um, the the dude, the bully goes up to What's-His-Face, and he's like, hey, thank you introduced me to What's-Her-Face, because I heard that she spreads her legs all the time. And yeah. the dude immediately turns around like, what'd you say? And it transforms, and he's like, better stop saying that shit. And I was like, yeah, that's, okay, that's not bad. Okaroon's, uh, pretty standard. Okaroon's demon form grew on me. I didn't like it at first. Uh, well, the second demon form was the, fine. The, the original one was bad. The first one was just like he was a mess. But whenever he turned it into the one that had like the eye shadow, not the eye shadow, the eye line. Yeah, the eye line. Over jacket, like the edgy, the edgy character. That one wasn't bad. Right, right. And uh, he still has kind of like a little bit of a that, that he's got like a, a little bit of a monster maw that kind of goes over his face, kind of like a hollow mask. I just um, kept seeing it as uh, as like like uh, Deku's uh, ma- like grinning mask. Right, right. Uh, so that that is something that kind of continues forward. Uh, but yeah, so that that's basically like in a gist the first two volumes. Uh, I'm still very excited about this anime because for all of the things I mean, like, and I feel like YouTube like <laughs> like just didn't click with it as much. But like uh, for all of the things that it does, uh, that that's a little questionable. And I I suspect that these are going to be taken out of the anime, especially now that you know, like anime is kind of like a big industry that kind of like flies overseas. Uh, a lot of the more problematic stuff is usually toned down a lot. Uh, however, mm-hmm. up until where I am, it it has this way of just dragging you on for like a really weird really fun time and it's it just keeps getting better and better and funnier and funnier and every single time it touches on like some on like these weirdly dark topics uh but like it never does so in a way that's just gonna kill you inside you know so it's not it's not like you're you're berserk it's not like your chainsaw man but 
it, it has a lot of personality in the way mm-hmm. that it presents itself. And honestly, I, I think Cyan Saru is 100% like the best studio to take this on. Um, uh, whenever they said that they announced that it was getting an anime adaptation, first things I thought was like, hell yeah, this is exactly what I've been waiting for. And the next thing that I thought is like, oh my God, who's going to do this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, because it's like, UFO table did a bang up job with Demon Slayer and you know like Mappa is wonderful but like please let your your employees rest once in a while uh so I was like Clover works question mark and like whatever they said Sai and Saru I had to go like do research because I hadn't heard of them before uh mm-hmm. and they worked on a lot of like really quirky really weird titles so I was like yeah yeah th- this looks like it might be a good fit and then whenever I saw the first couple of trailers, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, this is this is a good fit. This is this is gonna be fine." So I, I I'm kind of excited for it. Excited to to go see the theatrical release. What are, what are you guys thinking? You you gonna go? Um, you want to come I don't think with I'm gonna me? Get a theatrical release here, so come on. Let me fly all the way over there. I'll, I'll hang out. Fly all the way to Texas. Let's go watch it. I'm good. What? Uh, I think I'll, it's for like four hundred bucks right now. Uh, I'll uninvite my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you can, can come. You, you know, like, yeah, you, you you will spend 400 bucks on a flight, but you know what? I got you covered on the theater ticket. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> a 20 bucks theater ticket or whatever it is. Yeah, like the $20 theater ticket. It was 14 but yeah. <laughs> but uh, any any other thoughts on Don to Don before we wrap up this video? Mm, not really. Who was your favorite character? I didn't feel like I spent enough time with any of the characters to like one. It's too... I, I like followers. the main girl. I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's, it's too early to tell. What was your favorite power? There are multiple powers. Yeah. That's just you know, the hands. You had like the hands. Just, the hands and the speed. And the, and it the feels super like not speed. enough happened between the first 18 chapters. Even though a lot happened, two story arcs, I guess. Mm-hmm. If you want to call them full arcs, happened. They didn't really feel like Nothing. enough happened to establish stuff. I agree. What, what did you think of the art? Uh, the one with the girl when she's like all the, the hair girl, when she does like this, there's like a full spread of her. I like that art. That was cool. Yeah. And I like the way he draws the male, the characters. They all look good. All of the all characters. Their faces. Yeah. They, they, yeah, that he, wasn't bad. he has, and this, their hair looks fine. He has this really uh, weird ism uh, in his art that, uh, is unique to him. I haven't seen anyone else do this. Like not, not consistently. Right. Uh, but where he'll, He'll draw in very big, in excruciating detail, like, you know, backgrounds and scenery and stuff like that. Uh, But instead of, like, letting you get lost in speech bubbles, which a lot of authors do this, where they'll just put, like, a whole bunch of speech bubbles and you kind of, like, follow the conversation, but you don't know who's saying what. He'll Mm -hmm. draw the head of the character who's talking inside of their speech bubble so that you know who's saying what. And I'm like, I appreciate that. Like the mini version? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's a a little thing, but I like it. Um... Mm -hmm. Let's see what else was I gonna say is uh I think his creature design is top notch. Uh the cityscapes, the like, you know, like did this you could like be looking at uh, several pages in here and you're like, this feels very Japan. Like, you know, like the, the, he he has captured the essence of what this what the uh, small town and a city or like even like a rural area in this place would look like. Uh, which is really difficult to kind of like congratulate an author or a manga artist on these things because sometimes I hear say that they have like a library of assets that they kind of play with so that they can kind of like, you know, do these things super quick. And Mm -hmm. I've I've seen them myself on my own drawing apps. So, I mean, it's like, okay, if they do this, I understand drawing backgrounds is not interesting. Uh, But when he goes really hard though, like the turbo granny scenes with like the yokai inside the tunnel, or whenever Okaroon's going full blast on speed, right? Or whenever... Yeah, there were some really of, good scenes that he had some very good drawings on. I can agree with yeah. that. Yeah, so I, I do believe that, you know, he, he's got, like, some really awesome artistic talent. And uh, the, the use of, like, different uh, values in, like, you know, uh, it, it, manga's in, in grayscale, right? So, I mean, like, it, it's a bunch of grays. Um... But like all grace, yeah. Mm-hmm. It it just it looked really good, like, uh, and it really does feel like whenever we're going into a, a little bit of a oh gosh, like a darker place, like for example, Turbo Granny's uh uh tunnel, or whenever we're looking at the abandoned ha- hospital where the alien showed up, 
really, really good. Um, it's just like the attention to detail in every location, fantastic. I mean, like I really, really do enjoy this. It's a, it's a big breath of fresh air from looking at things. And I, I don't mean to rag on Bleach. I like Bleach. But you could tell whenever Tight Kubo was really, really tired of drawing because he would just draw whole pages where it was mostly just like a character, right? And a blank background. <laughs> and so like... Uh, to be I, fair, they worked him to the bone. They did. And, and I'm not saying they didn't, but I, I do appreciate whenever like a manga does have like this this level of detail involved, right? So it's not just like characters floating on empty space, but there's, there's a world around them and they are interacting with it. Um. Mm. So yeah, I mean, like that—that's basically where I am with the art. Uh, so I, I don't know. Favorite power? Uh, geez, it, it's difficult to say uh, because as the manga progresses, there are a lot of more powers that show up, and they're kind of interesting. Um, I, I would say that uh, in the first two story arcs, Okarun's power looks really cool. You know, he, he looks sick as hell when he goes demon mode. So I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I like this. I don't like the second form is version of his demon form better. The one where he has her power, but not her inside of him. Yeah, yeah. the second form was definitely a lot better. Yeah, it looks much more, much more usable mm -hmm. rather than the first form where I was kind of like, okay, yeah. How do we feel it, about, and, and you know, like this is something that I, I can't believe that I forgot to ask. This is a paranormal a title. There are things in the paranormal that look a little bit grotesque, uh, and they kind of like give you a little bit of a pause because of it's it's so unnatural, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm thinking, like for example, the scene where Momo first sees the aliens. She's in a hallway. There's three of them. Their eyes are blacked out. It, it's really creepy. Uh, and we're also thinking like the scene where uh, where uh, Okarun is first being possessed with by Turbo Granny, and his body is writhing and contorting in different uh, in different shapes. And mm -hmm. there is one scene when they are facing off against Acrobat Selkie, where Acrobat Selkie captures Momo by the throat with her hair and basically mm -hmm. hangs her. Yeah, uh, and she's whipping her around everywhere. I'm surprised. I'm on. A, I was honestly surprised that uh, they didn't break her neck doing that. Well, she's got psychic powers and it's a ghost. So I I, I like to, I mean, to justify it like, you know, like eh, maybe she got to a wall. That's a physical object. Yeah. But I, I like to kind of like uh, picture it as like, you know, maybe I'm also psychic shielding. That reminds me uh, when they're running away from Turbo Granny and she's destroying everything in their path. Mm. How is that justified in that world? They just be like, oh, look, yeah. our wall just randomly broke it, or something. Read, That's crazy. Read the next story arc. Okay, because I was going to say, because they made a mention of it, but, like, that was it. And I'm like, oh, this feels just like, you know, in superhero films where everything's destroyed, and they're just like, that's Re cool. Rebuild. Read the next story arc. Like, a lot of things will start making a lot more sense. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I probably will give it at least one more story arc. Mm -hmm. Uh, What else was I going to say? Regarding? So, yeah, like, the, the paranormal stuff, there, there was also one scene where, like, Turbo Granny, like, pulled a bunch of ghosts from a nearby cemetery so now like normal everyday people were chasing oh, yeah, that, after them that too. was like the, the first uh right before the the final fight with turbo granny right right uh so yeah like uh, th there was a, like a lot of like really creepy disturbing things uh how did how did those scenes hit you guys because i mean it was kind of like a deviation from the weird and funny and it was just like okay now we're getting really weird I think I must have skimmed them because none of them really affected me at all. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Next. You're, <laughs> next, also, let's, you're next also thing, all. next thing. Firstly, you're also a horror narrator, Sacro, so you're exposed to this a lot more. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it was I, fine I follow this, for me too. Yeah. I follow a Reddit that literally posts like official gore type stuff for like people who want to look into like what things happen in the disgusting side of the world. Right. And I'm occasionally on there. Uh, so be, I, I feel like this is less of like a, like this is not a like a shock value type of horror. This is like an uncanny type of horror, you know, like where, for example, uh, and I mentioned the scene where Momo meets the aliens for the first time. They look close enough to people to be people. Right. But not quite right. Like their eyes are blacked out. Oh, oh they don't look close enough to people to be people it, within mm -hmm. this world. Uh, so oh, like, maybe it's in this world. But. To me, to me, like yeah, I mean, you're you're like, oh, if you saw them in real life, or I'm like, well, they're not in real life. They're in this. Well, manga. I mean, even compared to the other characters, <laughs> so, like com compared to the other like men characters that we've seen in the show so far, they look completely like right. So not it, real. Was, that's the uncanniness of it. I, I'm thinking like you know, whenever you see something like that in this particular art 
nerd style to me, I'm like, this would be like the equivalent of encountering a man in black or a black eyed kid. You know, like it's 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 close enough to like what I would expect a person to look like that. Uh, I'm like, it's a person. But at the same time, something about them is off so that it's well, like, man in black is a person. Uh, well, I mean, it depends on who you're asking. So, like, if we're again, like, if we're going down the rabbit hole of paranormal uh, they're, they're things, they're technically the people who were like researching the Mothman slash alien encounters slash the Smiling Man slash everything. It, they're like supposedly a secret organization below the FBI, CIA, and the quote unquote deep state. There's a lot of conspiracy theories that say that they might not be 100% humans too. So I mean, like, there, there, there's, I mean, honestly, it depends on which way you're go- wanting to go down the down this road. Yeah, right? yeah. There's, there's a lot of stuff. Right. Uh, Even so, I've heard a lot of stuff on, on that stuff. Right. Uh, so there, there's that. Uh, whenever the people were possessed by the spirits and chasing Okarun and Momo around uh, the city while, while Turbo Granny was trying to corner them. Uh, also, like, you know, their eyes were blacked out and they were, these people were normal people, but suddenly they weren't in, in control of like their own faculties. And that made it uncanny. Cause like now I, I remember the way that this was, this was shown in the manga was that there was, they're running and the city is dark. And then they, they mm-hmm. see one person running towards them and then two, and they're emerging from the darkness and then three, and then there's a crowd and the entire crowd looks wrong. And, and I'm like, oh, gosh, imagine, you know, like just you're running around in the dark trying to get away from from something evil and you just run into a bunch of people, but something's not right about them. I'm like, oh, this would be terrifying. So I, I really dig the way that the author kind of does this. Mm-hmm. Um, it would have been it would have been more terrifying. So the, the idea of the hor- of horror in general is lack of control over a situation like mm-hmm. this they're powered, they're powerful, they have special abilities. It it loses some of its horror because there's no way they're going to get hurt. The suspense is kind of broken. Even though the creatures, the, when they're controlled to humans, mm-hmm. look super cool on the page, mm-hmm. there's there's no horror element because it's like, well, you there's can, nothing going to happen to them. You can definitely well, tell there's a lot of plot armor. Well, this is also well, a even shonen if it's not title. Armor, you know, like, of, yeah, uh, yeah. So th- this is like, okay, and additionally, I, I want to touch back again on the fact that they're not powered in the same way that, say, for example, Yuji and Jujutsu Kaisen is powered. They're they're powered as in, you know, like, normal, ordinary teenagers just discovered yesterday that they have powers, and they're trying their best to use them in the best way that they can. You know, so... Um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying the horror element, as cool as it is in... A concept you explaining it as a concept really mm. scary it's not from their point of view it's not that scary uh from their point of view i feel like they were pretty scared <laughs> like, well they, they might have been scared but <laughs> taking into account what they can do and what they have done already like it's it's just not as scary it's mm-hmm. more it's more of a buildup of um like a creep factor I, I suppose yeah so like so it's not it's not a horror title so like, like first first things first you know like it is it is a shonen title and uh, mm-hmm. it kind of falls in the neighborhood of like I wouldn't say like a battle manga uh but it, it it's, falls it's in the, definitely got the elements of a battle manga it's got elements of a battle manga so it's not gonna delve 100 percent into like horror territory right but like it is it, hopeful yeah but it does have a little bit of a creepiness to it and mm-hmm. a little bit of an uncanniness to it. And uh, I think, again, Sacro, like, if you do continue reading, once you get to the cult story plot, uh, suddenly it's going to take a little bit of an uptick in the horror. Uh, okay. But it, I mean, it's, I'll, get, I'll get a shot. It's not going to be, I, I don't think it's going to be exactly what you're expecting, you know, because like... Uh, no, from, no, from you're building up now. It better be great. From what I'm mm-hmm. hearing, you know, like, you're, you're expecting that it's going to take a full turn into like, oh, this is, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like, this is like uh, the Conjuring films, you know, like, they have no power, they're overwhelmed. Uh, but no, it's not going to be that. They're, they're still going to have powers. They're still going to do the best that they can. And they're going to be, there's going to be interference from otherworldly forces to help them. But... It, it's not it's not a cult like midsummer it it's it's a cult that hides in plain sight in everyday suburbia and it is it is creepy so, it, it okay, is I got, creepy. I got you going with, yeah 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 and, and so it, it is it, like when whenever it finally hits what's happening it's like oh i did not expect for this to be a thing nice mm. very nice uh okay i'll give it a, i'll give it a read and yeah. I'll, I'll come back to you, Helix, to let you know if it's good or not. Yeah. yeah. I'm biased. Right. Helix is all like, yeah, no, dude, please, somebody get me out of this ride. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm good. I have dand-a-dand too much. 
someday we'll get to darker than black and all. I'll have uh, something to talk about. I, I'm 100% uh, done with darker than black, so we're we're just waiting on Helix to finish. Uh, you read chapter, or did you chapter season two? Huh? Did you read season or did you watch season two? I did not watch season two. I, Good, I watched, okay, you're fine then. I, I watched season one, and that that was it. Uh, on rewatch season two, besides the one factor that I hate, uh, it's it's actually pretty decent. And then the ending is is amazing, just not what I wanted. Mm-hmm. I'll leave it at that. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right, but uh, we're gonna close Maybe. off this episode. Don to Don is uh, gonna be premiering soon, and hey, you know what? I'm gonna watch the anime. I feel like these guys will not, but you know, like <laughs> I'll watch it. Uh, but uh, you know, like uh, if there is uh, interest from you, the viewer, on us continuing our Don to Don discussion, if you want us to talk about upcoming story plots, hit us up on on X. Hit us up at the battle phase and uh, let us know. Hey, I want to hear more about Don to Don. Um, or any other titles that you may want us to check out. You know, we're op- always open to suggestions. We're always looking for new things to read. I'm dangerously close to finishing Chainsaw Man, and I don't know what I'm going to do with my life once that's over. Uh, I'm to read that vampire story. A vampire story? Yeah, I remember oh, you guys told me to yeah, pick yeah, a story, yeah, yeah. manga, and that's the one I picked out randomly. I bought yeah. the first chapter because it looked pretty. Which we, one was we, it? sitting on my shelf. Call was of that? the Night. Um, Call of the Night, yeah. Call of the Night. I don't think I that one either. Yeah, Call of the Night. We uh, So... Things that we have in uh, in talks for us to discuss uh, is Call of the Night. We have Kagurabachi. We have, uh, I think Helix discussed something called Infinite Gacha. Um, some recommendations that I've received off of uh, X have been uh, Under Ninja. We've received uh, a recommendation for Miyarago-chan, which I think is more in line with what Sacro was expecting Dandadan would be. Um, we're... We got recommendations on, oh gosh, what was the other one? Oh man, like somebody reached out to me and told me about, it was like a, a party of disillusioned adventurers who will save the world. Uh, yeah, that sounds What a title. Yeah, it, it has a title and I don't know what the title is. Uh, that's I, not I, the title? It sounds like a, that's every not the title. light novel title ever. Right? It's, it sounds, that's the perfect it's, title. It sounds like a title, right? But like, anyway, so we have a bunch of things that we have uh, in line that, you know, like people have recommended, but, you know, we're always looking for more recommendations. So if you have time, hit us up at the battle phase and let us know. Uh, Other than that, tell us, what did you think of our takes? Do you think that uh, Sacro and Helix are right, that Don to Don felt a little uh, heavy on the on the story uh, arbor and the and the fan service? Or do you think that Yoki Nobutatsu is an unrivaled genius? And gosh, we should all hope to be half the author he is. Uh, (laughs) Is there no in between or scale? (laughs) There's no in between. It's one or the other. Okay. (laughs) Uh, I'm still making you guys do a Naruto episode someday yeah we're gonna do a Naruto episode someday Um, so until next time I have been the Midnight Bard these have been the boys and we are done to done (laughs) (laughs) that was probably the best joke all night adios